How to do, folks? Larson Halleck here, and it's time for another rehaul of my video schedule. I'm still going to be doing two videos a week, but instead of one always being a prose or poetry narration, I'm going to do other things, like my previous articles that are relevant to my mission. And so that brings us to today. So you wanna have interracial sex. Interracial sex, or romance, is that thing that we're all supposed to pretend is a taboo, but is actually more or less demanded by academia and popular culture. Despite the fact that interracial sex is one of modern society's loftiest ideals, getting one's swirl on might still seem to be a daunting task, regardless of what race you yourself happen to be a member of. If you are a white or Asian male, you were denigrated culturally as being weak, effeminate, small penis, and purveyors of bland and unexciting sex. Most non-Asian minority, or NAM men, are portrayed as lascivious perverts. All in all, every race has some sort of stereotype baggage attached to it. In other words, whatever race you, the reader, happen to be, quit bitching. As somebody firmly in the unexciting sex ice person category, who has nonetheless built up a good flag count of interracial fucking, I can safely say that the easiest part of interracial sex is the sex itself. Contrary to the jokes of hundreds of hack comedians, the difficulty lies in getting to the bedroom. Being an anthropologist by training and a neo-masculinist by choice, I will not attempt to give you some we are the world, force everybody to be a white liberal bullshit. Of course, different races and cultures are different, and they will, on average, act different from each other. To cite one example from my own experience, speaking in the broadest terms, ice women, white and Asian women, of course, tend to be a little bit more reserved when dealing with men, and as such you will more often than not need to take a less aggressive tack with them than you would with a sun woman. Call it R and K selection, I don't know. Of course, the overwhelming majority of women do like to feel subordinate to men, sexually at the very least, and women of all races want to sleep with masculine dominant men, so the amount of assertiveness you use is truly more a matter of degree than a black and white dichotomy. To further complicate matters, my experiences with interracial sex are largely of women that were nonetheless born and raised in the United States, the US being the multiracial empire that it is, so bear in mind that these differences are multiplied tenfold when you go to other countries and realize that each ethnicity and country is also culturally different, in addition to racial differences. In other words, an African American probably differs greatly from some South African hottentot. Now how much of that is nature and nurture? Well, that's beyond the scope of this video. Once you get past the convoluted web of cultural assumptions, sexual marketplace hierarchy, and any racial animosity their race might have with yours, the actual act of coitus is almost trivially simple. Again, from my own experience, some types of women tend to be more active, some more passive, but if you can give them a good and hard rogering, you'll satisfy them and make them come back for more. In short, most women bang in ways that are pretty similar, and they all get aroused by similar things. And if you want to know how to do that, guess whose body of work you can peruse. So ultimately, in most cases, you would approach a woman of a different race the same way you would as a woman of your own race. With all that being said, here's a few general pointers. Regardless of what race you are, no woman wants to sleep with a skinny fat doughboy. Even if you are a member of a race that ranks low in the proverbial sexual marketplace, and I am, Having a good physique will give them a reason to look beyond that. Just speaking anecdotally, I've had three women mention to me, out of the blue, that they never imagined they could bang an Asian man until I slept with them. So, there's proof right there that you can overcome your racial handicap. Being in shape will make it easier to hold the position of dominance in a metaphorical sense, and having a strong physique will allow you to do so physically such as in my favorite sexual maneuver, the three-way dance, which is as pure a physical dominance as anything else you can do in the bedroom. And if you're strong enough, you can pull this off even if the woman in question comes from some freakish brick shithouse ethnicity. Yes, some races are generally considered to be more attractive than others, and they can be roughly grouped into two hierarchies of attractiveness, one for men, one for women. Data from the mildly autistic bunch at OkCupid corroborates that. 
and frankly, any bouncer at a club could also corroborate that. As anyone can see, white, black, and Caucasoid Hispanic men tend to have an easier time getting women than, say, a guy from India. But, as I have dedicated my life to proving, really, your race won't make or break every situation. While Asian women do generally have a thing for white men, if you're a white man walking around with bad posture, a gut, man titties, and a brain full of anime tentacle porn, you're going to be in for a rude awakening if you expect to pick up a good-looking Asian girl just because, well, I'm a white man. You still need to put in the effort to be a man worth having. Even though some ethnicities have to put in less effort and some have to put in more effort, the effort is always there. To go back to the subcontinental example, Indian men do rank very low in the sexual marketplace, but again, you can overcome that. Even though I'm not of any subcontinental ancestry myself, I think I can give advice to the tune of... Stop holding yourself down with the mindset that you can't do it. Hit the gym. Don't shit in the street. Or, I would also recommend this book. It's not mine, but it's almost as good. As a side note, buy my book. To sum this section up, be aware of sexual dynamics. But don't let them rule your life and defeat you without a fight. Just understand that sometimes you might have to work harder. And on a vaguely similar note... Or in other words, don't be a patronizing shithead. What do I mean by patronizing shithead? It's not really something I can define quick and easy, but I can demonstrate what I mean. Let us assume that you are interested in pursuing an Asian woman. If you were to go up to her and say something like, Konnichiwa, my pale and demure lotus blossom. Fall to your knees and suck my white cock. That's a patronizing shithead. Don't do that. Before anybody accuses me of being an SJW, I'm fully aware that stereotypes exist for a very good reason. What I'm telling you here is to keep them in the back of your mind, use it to inform your decisions without airing them out in the open. From my experience, women of any race respond positively to being spoken to like they were any other human being. Showing a bit of basic respect without pedestalization, combined with putting on your shit and working your game, will carry the day on the sexual battlefield and get you what you so desire. I write this article not to advocate or disparage interracial relationships. I'm certainly not against the concept, and I've enjoyed it much myself. I'm just against the idea of it being propagandized for political purposes and having the concept fetishized as some sort of sacrament, which pop culture often does. Let people act as they will, and most people will stick to their own race. But, as an anthropologist again, there's always going to be some amount of race mixing going on, and that's okay. Should you wish to be of that ilk, allow this video to show you the way. I'm Larson Halleck. Keep on training. And now, a word from our sponsors. Hello, are you a fan of Larson Halleck and the Barbaric Gentleman? Of course you are, otherwise you wouldn't be watching. Would you like to help the channel grow? Would you like to help me out? If so, here's how you can. You can go to patreon.com slash Larson Halleck and join the ranks of these illustrious heroes. You can also go to www.paypal.me slash Larson Halleck to also donate some money. You can also buy my book. The Patreon, the PayPal, and the link to my book are all found in the video description. You can also follow me on Twitter or on Instagram. I no longer advertise my Gab because Gab sucks. Otherwise, enjoy, keep watching the videos, and spread the word.